Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Today, we're looking at massive Bitcoin volatility coming up in quarter four. We're also going to look at a conservative price target for Bitcoin. So if you like the sound of conservative price targets, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you like Moon Boy price targets, you guys can subscribe to the channel, hit bell notifications, icons and all so you see all this content pop up in your newsfeed. Help out that YouTube algorithm down below. Follow us on Instagram and on Twitter. Let's dive into today's video starting with Patreon. If you guys are interested to learn more about cryptocurrency trading and investing, jump aboard down below. As I've mentioned in most of the videos leading up to the middle of this month, we're going at about 5 to 10 places per day. Yesterday, we were at 43. We got 36 left now. So, make sure you jump on if you are interested in learning more about cryptocurrency trading and investing. Links to Patreon are down below. Uh, next thing is the fear and greed. We're at 49 today. Yesterday was at 30. So you can really see the volatility in the market start to heat up as we are moving towards that quarter four. It's nice to see the market uh, trend steady for a while. And then from that point, we generally get the volatility. So it's not really, well, it shouldn't come as any surprise to people if you've been in the market for more than a few months that the market likes to trend sideways and consolidate. And then we get these blowout moves. And I'll show you this specifically on the chart and what looks to be like a repeating pattern on Bitcoin, on a smaller time frame, and on the bigger time frame. It's also on Cardano. I'll show you that as well. So fear and greed, 49. We're neutral. Yesterday was fearful. Not much else happened, right? You know, the market went down a touch and now we're back to similar prices for many of these cryptos. Looking at the market cap, 2.28 trillion. So we're getting very close to that previous all-time high, which is around 2.5, 2.6 trillion. ETH just got to 3,600 today. And now Bitcoin has pushed past 48K as well. Cardano holding up at its old all-time high levels, which is exactly what we want to see. And the area that we are looking for the market to consolidate on should we get further movement to the upside. So we'll look at ETH and Cardano in a bit, but we want to look at these first things uh, which I mentioned here. So the massive volatility, supply shocks, volatility gets messy. You'll notice it because it gets highly emotional. So when the market gets super emotional, that is the most difficult time to be making decisions. So right now, while we're just doing a few percent here and there day to day, this is the time to have your plan set up moving forward for this quarter four, which many are anticipating to be one of the most volatile. So if you are waiting for that period to make your choices in the market, it's going to get way more difficult for you. So make sure you've got something written down now, have some price targets in mind, maybe have trailing stops in mind. And I will do a video coming up very soon about trading strategies and exit strategies. So make sure you've hit subscribe to the channel and one of those will come out. This is from Raul Powell. And we're looking at here, Raul predicting extraordinary quarter four for crypto market amid shifting global economic sentiment. Generally speaking, the last quarter of the year is when all of the buses come. So all the trains are coming in, all of everything just starts taking off. Everybody's job is to be on the lookout for those buses because you don't want them to be run over by the bus and you want to catch the right bus. So you don't want to be chasing after a train as the old saying goes. Once the train's left the station, it's gone. Don't try and chase after that train because it gets very complicated and very difficult. My bet is that crypto is that the crypto bus is a rocket ship and not a bus. And this last quarter will be extraordinary. The whole year is usually made between September and December. So we have seen that in the past many times over. And just looking at uh, previous ranges from this previous period, we've done about 1500% from the low in March to the peak in April. So just over 12 months, about a 13 month period there. And we're going to look at some other price projections in just a bit. But let's look at the supply shocks as well. Now, here is one of the chart. Here is how the chart for the three month and the one month supply has looked for, like for Bitcoin lately. The blue is the one month and the gray is the three months. So this is the Bitcoin supply. As the chart above shows, only 6.8% of the circulating supply, so Bitcoin that is actually being moved around, has changed hands within the last month. So if there were 100 Bitcoin changing hands, only 6.8 of those have actually moved around in the last month. When the figure 
for the three month metric is around 15.8. So around seven and 16. So about half of the other. So in the last month, about 7% has moved around. In the last three months, about 16% has moved around. So regardless of the belief in whether Bitcoin should be worth something or not, just the mere fact that the supply will be low is enough to push a market up. And I know many of you guys get that already, that if you take it out of circulation and everyone then wants it, it's going to shoot the price up and then more people are going to want it and it shoots the price up even further. So it doesn't even matter whether Bitcoin, there's something wrong with it or it's right or it's slow or it's the best thing ever for, for El Salvador. Just the mere fact from the supply shock is enough to send prices soaring. Bitcoin has not gone under $10,000 in one year. So we haven't been below five figures in that entire period. So what does this mean? Personally, I look at it like a psychological point. Bitcoin has established a new normal and that new normal is above or in the five figures. So above the four figures and in five figures. We've put in a reasonable low at that 30,000 level, so that 28K to 30K. So we could almost get to a point now, provided we don't get a huge spike, you know, a wick down into the 20s. We could almost say that maybe we'll never see $20,000 Bitcoin again. I don't think we'll see a teens again and maybe never a 20,000 again. And soon it might not even be a 30,000 Bitcoin again, but that will come down to where does the market peak out during this cycle. So we've got about a 1500% move from the low to the high. And in previous cycles, it doesn't generally move the same as it did in the first section of the cycle. So this generally is the biggest section that we see for cryptocurrency. Then in the last section, the dollar value looks massive, but the percentage is low. So going from 30,000 to 180,000 is huge very, very big in dollars. You know, that's $150,000 and Bitcoin has never moved $150,000 in its entire history. This is just as an example. But in terms of a percentage from about, call it 30, and we move it up to about $180,000, then we can only see it's about 500%. So that's about a third of that move. And I'm just coming up with a few numbers here based on some other fibs that I have thrown up before on the channel. So my target is around that 120 to about that 180, $200,000 level. I like the 120 because that's a doubling of where we saw the top come in. So that's at around the $60,000 level that you can see right here. You guys would know about the $60,000 level. And I'm just doing that as a doubling. Uh, the market does like to repeat these figures and we'll see that come up if that happens quite soon. You know, the headlines will be around the market has done double what it was at the previous top and all these sorts of things. And also the $100,000 level, obviously it's a psychological level. We don't need to go into that in any more detail. So the first little pullback potentially, we'll see around that 90 to about 120-ish. And then maybe we go in for another move, something like we saw through this area on the way up. You know, we peaked out at 40, pulled back to about 30, and then we took off from that 30 level to the 60. It only got a double from that low until we stopped in our tracks and then came all the way back down. On to more supply shocks and there's some Bitcoin being locked up and used in the Lightning Network. This is obviously getting a bit of traction now with uh, El Salvador coming on board and using Bitcoin. Good to see that it's actually getting used and improved on and it does look like a very good network even though the ETH maxis and the Bitcoin haters don't like the look of Lightning Network. It's being used now. It looks good. The other piece here is if companies and institutional investors diversify their portfolios and allocate about 5% to Bitcoin. So this is Kathy Wood's prediction, ARK Invest CEO. So predicts about 500,000 in about five years. We've got time, we've got patience. Even if this gets halfway to 250, I think most people are going to be pretty happy from this price point of about $50,000. So we believe that the price will be tenfold of where it is today. So instead of 45,000, over 500,000. So from 45 to over 500,000, but that's dependent on companies and institutional investors diversifying their portfolios by allocating 5% to Bitcoin. So that's what's needed to push the market this high up or all of the Bitcoin being taken off the market and everyone fighting over one or two, you know, for an example. That's where we get that supply shock and that really big push. On to Ethereum and just an update from where we are yesterday. The strength of ETH continues to surprise me. 
I'm not saying that we won't get any pullbacks, nice big wicks, good buying opportunities to maybe some 50% levels of 28 or 2900. But just the small fact here that yesterday's market moved above the September shock. So we had the flash crash, the bounce, and we have now just moved above that price, which was around 3568. That's what I'm looking at right there. So many other markets haven't had that. If we take a look at Cardano for an example, this was the drop and then the bounce back and it tried again, but now it's fallen under and we're now hitting our head against our 50% level and still trying to recover and close above the previous all-time high. So for me, this just looks like more buying opportunities. I think uh, Cardano does have that potential to get to that 750 to 1250 $14 during the end of this bull cycle. So it's still got reasonable returns there, but this just n does not look as strong as something like ETH, which you can see here is just closed above it, or Bitcoin, which is also closed above the drop. So we had the drop, the bounce, and now we've closed above that level yesterday. So that's looking a little stronger. Now to that pattern that I was talking about earlier in the video, we can see back from the previous move up, we've got the big move from November, December into January, fall back into late January, and then the next few peaks. We take a look at what's going on now, we can see something quite similar. We've discussed this on the channel before, but it's good to see it happening uh, during live trading, you know, live sessions and just keep track of it. So we got a big move out, quick move, and we got that here. We got a nice, good correction. We got that there. Then we had the next move out and then the rounding started. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but we got that little bit of a rounding, a little peak out, quick correction, rounding above, little peak out, quick correction. The market tried to come back and maybe that's what's happening now. And then we get this next shock, which could be similar to what we had just back here. So if we get that, that would be fantastic. And hopefully we get that V-shaped recovery, which is a little different to what this period was. Onto ADA, which also looks like what Bitcoin has also put in. I'll take these lines off so you can just see. You got the run up, the correction, the next run, the next correction, and then the rounding over, the peak above, tried, corrected. Now we're trying to come back. Maybe we get a quick flash again and move on. But you can see that that pattern repeats time and time again in the market. And this goes back to the Wyckoff analysis and volume theory. You can see it happening here in Bitcoin. We've seen it on a bigger time frame through this period in Bitcoin. So just keep your eyes peeled for what comes next. And if we get this extreme volatility, be prepared on whichever cryptocurrencies you're looking to get into because I think that will be probably one of the last good opportunities before the market takes off. And there, there obviously will be other opportunities, maybe the breakouts and stuff like that. But for the lowest price opportunity, I think I could be wrong. I'm happy to be proven wrong, get cheaper prices. But that, that may be one of those opportunities which could be coming. A lot of ifs and thens. But I'm just taking note of what the patterns have looked like in the past. Now onto the portfolio on the channel and this is through SwiftX. So if you guys want to sign up with SwiftX, link to it is down below in the description, Australians and New Zealand's $10 of free Bitcoin when you guys sign up. So I'm just using the demo portfolio here. We're at 18,400 US dollars consisting of Solana, ADA, FTT and ETH. Nice and stable cryptocurrencies at the moment. I think they'll do reasonably well leading into this next stage. Maybe not the biggest gains, but I feel like they're the safest from the fundamentals that I've looked at from the projects. Lastly, if you guys are looking for hardware wallets to store your cryptocurrency, come a bear market or stuff that you want to hold longer term and stake, check out the Ledger Nano S or Ledger Nano X. Aussie dollars, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Link to this is down below as well. And if you do want to stake your ADA, check out the Investor Accelerator pool. All the links are down below. I'll wrap it up there for you guys. I'll see you soon on Twitter or on Instagram, or of course, on Patreon. It's 36 left here. Links are down below. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff to help out the YouTube algorithm. And I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.